and content based uh, uh, image and speech analysis. Now I request uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar to give his presentation. The first attribute is the distributed sensors and control mechanisms. The faculty of cognition, which is housed in our content based computer, that's called as the brain, acquires information fuzzily about the information through various natural sensory mechanisms such as vision, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. It integrates this for key information and provides appropriate interpretation through the cognitive computer. The cognitive process then advances further towards some attributes such as very important things like learning, recollection and reasoning which results in appropriate action through muscular control and the mechanism of muscular control is directed by a complex neural network distributed in the central nervous system of the human brain. This process of cognition takes place through neural computing that unlike hard computing in our present day digital computers is based on some sort of soft computing. It is this process of soft computing that takes place through the biological neural network and that's what makes the human an intelligent animal. There is a lot of activity that has been going on for the past 50 to 60 years to develop a computer system which can perform several ways to understand fully and how do you make the system to do all this uh, kind of task is uh, still very challenging uh, uh, research problem for many domains related to these uh, fields and there have been several names like initially artificial intelligence then computational intelligence, expert systems, knowledge based systems, now machine learning, there is a new area called deep learning coming now which are addressing basically all these uh, uh, problems and I would like to present a few personal experiences and thoughts uh, <coughs> related to teaching the courses uh, on uh, soft computing and some research that we have done uh, in topics related to soft computing. Uh, just to indicate uh, a few observations, so there are a number of courses which, uh, which are related to this uh, topic of soft computing like pattern recognition at IIT Madras and I taught it uh, five times in recent past and we introduced a new course on kettle methods for pattern analysis of three years back which addresses some of the uh, most, more current topics like support vector machines and we had a elective course on soft computing which we taught only once because we, we could not get time to teach uh, this soft computing course as such but those for soft computing course are similar in the other courses so therefore I would like to share my experience on so typically the relevant courses for soft computing are like what I said, pattern recognition or some institutes may have machine learning, some institutes uh, uh, have artificial neural network and many institutes uh, they have this course on soft computing and very few institutes have this course on scanner methods for they have more than one of these courses being offered as elective courses for the master's uh, students and engineering college <coughs> they have only one of these courses being offered at uh, uh, the senior undergraduate level or maybe at the graduate level. And to make the students to understand these topics, it requires good mathematical background and more than that I would say the students should be comfortable in dealing with the mathematics which they would have possibly studied in the first two or even first two years of their bachelor's program but I feel that the current day undergraduate program in many colleges are kind of killing their mathematical uh, abilities and skills which makes it difficult when they come for the postgraduate programs to deal with even very simple mathematics. Actually, when we start teaching the courses, we find that students are not even aware of what an inner product between two vector C is or what an outer product between two vector C. It's not that they have not studied, but I think our undergraduation curriculum probably would have killed whatever they had learned earlier, right? And by the time they come for PG courses in IIT, right? I think they are completely out of touch, right? I think that is something that needs to be rectified at the undergraduate level. That's unfortunately happening even in programs like ECE program where there are courses like digital signal processing, communication and so on but I think the mathematics part is completely being skipped and students uh, don't have any comfort with the mathematics when they come out of this uh, program. It's not that students are not capable of dealing with that but I think our way of teaching these courses and our way of asking the questions in the exams right, are uh, completely trying to avoid the mathematics. I think that's unfortunate but unless somebody is very comfortable with the doing the mathematics, it's very difficult to learn this topic and as I said there, the basic mathematics topics that are required are like linear algebra, probability theory, calculus, 
and maybe some little bit of optimization theory. And program skills are required to do the assignments related to courses or something like C or C++ or MATLAB or SQL. So the following things I have listed there. This is based on what we uh, do. Sometimes we just give the lectures and ask the students to uh, list the lectures and then uh, take the exams. It's important to make sure that they understand what is uh, covered in the classes. And one of the things that seem to have helped a lot is giving the tutorials to the students that involve problem solving. Typically, every two weeks or three weeks, we give a one hour tutorial where there are three or four problems based on the topics that have been covered in those two or three weeks. The students are required to attempt to solve those problems and make sure that they understand the concept in order to answer these uh, uh, problems, problems. And students also can do a lot of programming assignment based experiments. It's not necessary to give very complex assignment that deals with the relevant data. You can design simple uh, assignments which deal with a two dimensional artificial data so that they can visualize the effect of the different techniques and the principles they study in the uh, course and then go on to the assignment based experiments on the real world uh, problem data. And typically we spend a lot of time with the students. We form groups of two or three students uh, for doing these assignments. And with every batch of two or three students for every assignment, we spend at least half an hour to 45 minutes in order to see what they have done, what they have understood, and how to interpret the results, how to explain the results, and where they are making the mistakes while doing the assignments. I think that gives them a lot of confidence uh, <coughs> in what they are learning. And in addition to that, <coughs> we also have uh, project assignments. Typically, <coughs> at the later part of the course, maybe in the uh, uh, third part of the course, we do a project which they can work on for about a month and then implement the project and then show the uh, demonstration of the project at the end of the semester. And some advanced courses may have a type of presentation which involves uh, <coughs> we are in the papers that the student can uh, pick up and, uh, and then go through the, uh, the paper and the related papers and then make a presentation for about 20 to 25 minutes that helps the students to learn about that particular paper thoroughly and also reduce the training for the student how to present what the student has understood. Along with this one can have this written examination because still the uh, handwritten examination I uh, important because that helps uh, 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 us to evaluate how much the student has learned. But typically the question should be like understanding and probing how much the student has understood. Right? Typically I see many university examination papers where they ask for some <coughs> reproduction of what they have probably seen in the book, right? Not necessarily that they understood that or not. Okay? And typically it also should be leading to students giving mathematical answers, not a descriptive answer. That's where you can know that the student has really understood the uh, underlying principles or not. And coming to the <coughs> experience of uh, research in terms related to this top computing, uh, I personally have experience in this uh, variety of uh, topics where we worked on recognition of speech in Indian languages uh, using variety of uh, techniques like statistical models, pattern recognition, then later, artificial neural models of analytics. In the recent past, we have been working on this uh, topic of canon methods for pattern analysis. We also have done a lot of work on this uh, handwritten character recognition in Indian language scripts. And there is also a lot of work being done on the character based information retriever, typically like uh, uh, <coughs> event retriever, which involves classification, annotation, as part of the retriever class. <coughs> I will go on to the, uh, maybe end of the uh, slides to show. What is the kind of learning techniques that are going on currently? All along we have been talking about using the methods like artificial neural networks to do this. That's why the conventional soft computing course will typically have these three components like artificial neural networks and fuzzy logic and evolutionary computation. I think there is a lot of progress in this uh, uh, topic related to the machine learning or uh, learning. I feel that we should bring in the advanced topics like the kernel methods and the current topics like the deep learning and <coughs> the current techniques that are related to machine learning are related to what is called the semi-supervised learning. The conventional models like the artificial neural networks are capable of getting trained by giving what is called the labeled data and that's what is known as the supervised learning 
and typical for many real world tasks, very difficult to find the adequate amount of the learning data. So, how one can make this model train with a partial amount of data labeled or significant amount of data unlabeled? So, there is a lot of work going on on this semi supervised learning. And uh, there is not necessarily be only one view of the data, there are different views by which one can look at the data, and this is uh, being studied on the topic of multi view learning. And if you look at the latest uh, uh, IEEE transactions on pattern analysis and machine intelligence, it's a special issue on deep learning, and there's a very nice article on the topic called representation learning. Typically, we uh, which has got several layers of hierarchy for doing simply this feature extraction. So there's a lot of work being done to see how one can come up with the methods for doing this uh, uh, feature extraction using this uh, deep learning. So this deep learning is being considered as some kind of a third bar for the topic of artificial neural networks. And, and this was again going back to the topics like the belief networks, Boltzmann machines, convolutional networks, academic neural networks. One of the things we suffix this word D because we are talking about several layers where each layer will contain one of this kind of uh, models. And my teaching and research philosophies have been uh, I will tell you to be very simple, right? My teaching philosophy is seek first to understand and then to be understood. Okay? I see many people saying that they can download the material that's available in several places and then simply go and make it, present that slides and then leave what is there on the slide. I feel that that's simply not effective. Right? One has to read between the lines and also one has to read behind the lines. And that will come only if you understand what is the content of the, what are the source that you use. And only if you understand, then it comes the next step, how do you make the other people understand, right? That is the second part of this philosophy. That is, seek first to understand and then to be understood. And research philosophy, I think uh, many of you might be knowing, research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what no one else has thought. Okay, I think that is uh, simply the motivation for uh, many of us, and I feel that that's what uh, <coughs> makes us enjoy what we are doing. This is a uh, few comments I'd like to close. Thank you.